Welcome to our next installment of Arming the Unarmed. For those looking for their first firearm, we already established that your home defense weapon system should consist of a pistol and some kind of shoulder weapon. There are a total of five small arms, starting with the pistol and four shoulder weapons. The shoulder weapon can be divided into four different types. The machine pistol, the shotgun, the carbine, and the rifle. We will cover these in detail in our future installments. For now we're going to discuss the pistol. The pistol is the most personal and thus the most intimate of firearms. Only blades and martial arts bludgeon type weapons become more intimate. Therefore, it is important that whatever pistol you decide fits you. Not just your financial budget, but your mental budget. How much mental energy are you going to budget into mastering your weapon? Once again, we're talking about a basic first aid kit, not a paramedic's field pack. We're talking a basic home repair toolbox, not an entire rollaway full of tools. So while the current trend is that the high capacity striker fired 9mm automatic is the weapon to have, is it? Are you willing to budget not only the financial aspect, which is the price of the weapon and cost of ammunition for training, but also the mental energy to master the increased complexity of the automatic. So your first choice in choosing a pistol should be automatic or revolver. The current Niners or Wonder Niners will tell you that unless you have a high capacity striker fire 9mm, you might as well be unarmed. Dial 911 and die, just don't even bother. Well, nothing any further from the truth. Recently, in South Carolina, an attempted mass shooter armed with an AR 15 was stopped by a lady with a revolver. Not only a revolver, but a 22 caliber revolver. In a similar case, a hotel clerk was being robbed. She decided not to play hero and let the robber have the money. When the robber decided that he was not satisfied with the money but wanted some personal time with her, use of her body, she determined enough was enough, drew a 22 revolver, plugged him five times in the chest, and the robber slash rapist collapsed in a heap on top of her. So, the, cur the current trendies will try and tell you that it's either a high capacity 9 millimeter or nothing. Well, that's just the current trend. While the operation of an automatic pistol is not rocket science, it is more complex. There are a greater number of steps required to make the weapon ready for use and to make the weapon safe. It's not complex, but these are more steps that you must take or the weapon either will not function or it will be unsafe. The single action automatic, such as the 1911, is the most complex. So here the weapon is unloaded and safe. If I wish to make the weapon ready, I need to load it. Loaded, but not ready. Well, it's actually called readiness condition three. The third condition of readiness, as in the least ready. To make this weapon ready to fire, I need to rack the slide. However, at this moment, the weapon is in what's called condition zero. 
squeeze the trigger, and the weapon will fire. It is not safe to carry. To make this weapon safe to carry, I have two other options with the single action auto. I can decock the hammer. I am now in readiness condition two. To make this weapon ready to fire, bump in the night, I need to answer an intruder. I cock the hammer and now the weapon is in fact ready to fire. Next condition of readiness is referred to as condition one. Weapon is cocked. I engage the manual safety. Now the weapon is what is known as readiness condition one. To make the weapon ready to fire, I disengage the safety and weapon goes off, goes boom. Sounds simple, is simple. Yet under stress, people have been known to fail. A homeowner who kept his weapon in condition three died because while he was racking the slide, the intruder took him out. A police officer off duty in plain clothes was in the line at a bank to cash a check. The man in front of him tried to be a bank robber. The cop decided, hey, easy bust, drew his 1911, halt police. The bank robber promptly turned and shot him dead because the officer failed to disengage the manual safety. Once again, not overly complex, but as simple as these movements are, they must be accomplished promptly, quickly, and properly. For those who do not wish to budget more mental energy, the revolver is a viable alternative. For starters, revolvers come in two styles. Double action and the single action. Single action, you must cock the hammer each time weapon is fired. The single action is not a revolver that you would buy if you were seeking to arm yourself for self-defense. If you happen to have one and you did not want to buy a new one, then buying the extra ammo and devoting the mental energy into reloading the revolver under stress is a cheaper alternative than going out and buying a double action. What makes the single action unsuitable for self-defense is the fact that reloading it requires that you open the gate, eject each of the shells individually. Eject, turn, eject, turn, eject, turn. Then you load it in the same manner. Insert a shell, rotate. Insert a shell, rotate. Insert a shell, rotate. For all practical purposes, you have six chances to get yourself out of trouble. Once you've fired your sixth shot, the single action revolver is, for all intensive purposes, out of the fight. The double action revolver is the one to get if one decides that a revolver is for them. It is extremely simple to operate. Open the cylinder, five, in some cases six, this one's a five. The weapon is now unloaded and clear. Open the cylinder, insert, in this case five, other revolver six. Close the cylinder, revolver is loaded and ready to go. Bump in the night, pick up the revolver, squeeze the trigger, in this case, you have five chances to solve the problem. Now, with this particular model of revolver, you do have two options. You can fire the weapon, what's called double action, where the trigger 
does two actions. It cocks the hammer and then fires the weapon. You have a long, heavy trigger pull. This makes for rapid fire, up close and personal, but it takes a little more effort to fire it accurately. If you need to make a surgical shot, as in picking off a guilty adversary amongst innocents, you have the option to cock the hammer. The trigger is now short and light, being more conducive to accurate fire. If that becomes too complex, ignore the single action feature and just fire the revolver double action. Current revolver tactics does indeed call for one to ignore the single action feature. There are revolvers that do not have the single action feature. The hammer is fully enclosed and you are unable to manually cock it. So with the revolver, unloaded and clear. Load your cells, close the cylinder, load it and ready. Open the cylinder, dump the shells, now unloaded and safe. Where the revolver does increase in complexity is in reloading. Once you fired your five or six shots, now reloading does become a little more complex than with an automatic. You must first open the cylinder, tilt the revolver muzzle up using gravity to help eject the shells. Hit the ejector, eject the shells. Now once again, using gravity, point the muzzle down. If you have speed loaders, line up your shells, place them in, click the speed loader, releasing the shells, drop the speed loader, and close the cylinder. This is why revolvers have what is called a utility curve. For the beginner, whose only objective is bump in the night, get the weapon out, and have your five or six chances to get out of trouble, the revolver is extremely useful. When you start getting into more advanced courses of fire, its usefulness drops off when compared to an automatic because the reloading sequence is more complex. As you become more experienced with the revolver, revolvers can better handle what are called Magnum cartridges. 357, 44 Magnum, the revolver can handle these better. Automatics chambered in Magnum cartridges are too bulky, too heavy, and also they eject the shells. Magnum ammunition is expensive. Magnum revolver people like to save their brass and reload it, reuse it. Instead of having to scour the ground for ejected shells, you simply eject the shells and place them in a container, your pocket, or whatever. So, as you become more experienced and you want to master the Magnum revolver, the revolver then becomes an expert's weapon and its usefulness increases again. The striker fired automatic pistol is an attempt to bring the simplicity of the revolver into the realm of the automatic. Like the revolver, once the weapon is ready, you simply pick it up, point it, and fire. Same as a revolver. However, you still have the increased complexity of increased options. Unloaded and safe. Loaded, but not ready. Or, as in with the 1911, readiness condition three. To make the weapon ready, you need to operate the slide. There is no hammer to decock, there is no manual safety, so condition 2 does not exist. You are now in condition 1. To place this weapon in condition 0, there is, a, there is a minor safety, a small safety here on the trigger. Once that trigger 
that safety on the trigger is depressed, you are in condition zero. Oh, by the way, this one here is actually a 40 caliber Glock 22. The only difference between this one and the 9mm Glock 19 is the opening at the muzzle. Otherwise, the two are virtually identical. Once again, to make the weapon safe, unloaded, but not clear. Only after rejecting the shell is the weapon, like the 1911, unloaded, clear, and safe. Simple, but still more complicated than a revolver. Also, it is not enough to simply fire your weapon. You must know how to run it. Running a weapon means that one has the ability to load the weapon, unload the weapon, and clear malfunctions. In the case of the automatic, you can have a failure to feed. You can have a stovepipe. You can have a short cycle. You must train your reflexes to deal with these malfunctions. The revolver is virtually, and the keyword is virtually immune to such minor malfunctions. It is a myth that revolvers absolutely cannot jam. If you get dirt in the mechanism, the revolver will jam, and it will jam hard. You cannot do a rapid clear in the field. Oh, recently, I had a squib fire. The bullet actually lodged in the cylinder gap between the cylinder and barrel. So I essentially could not open the cylinder. I could not clear it. I had to actually run a cleaning rod down, slam the bullet back in. Then I could open the cylinder and eject the malfunctioning bullet. Another weakness of the revolver is a suspect can grab the cylinder. Now the revolver is inoperative. In fact, in the revolver era, many criminals would actually practice grabbing the cylinder of the revolver, enabling the police officer unable to fire. So revolvers do have their weaknesses, but they also have their strengths. If you are not willing to devote the mental energy to the concept of load, make ready, clear any malfunctions, unload, and clear, the revolver is worth looking at. Once the choice is made between revolver and automatic, the next choice is caliber. I myself am a 45 guy. The late Colonel Cooper, the 1911 and its 45 cartridge remains the weapon of choice for those who understand the problem. For the newly armed, I would be the last person to try and sell someone a 1911 or even a striker fired 45. So your choices narrow down to 22 or one of the two minor calibers. 9mm for the automatic, 38 special for the revolver. Do you wish to skip the 22 phase? That can be done. People have done it. Understand, you will have to fire more rounds of more expensive ammunition to achieve that minimum level of proficiency. If you're willing to budget the extra ammunition, the extra more expensive ammunition, and deal with the frustrations of firing a more powerful cartridge you're not used to, then it can be done. Understand it will be an increase 
in both financial and mental frustration. Next in our series, we will cover the automatic and the revolver in greater detail. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.